So we've seen studies where avocados are combined with higher carbohydrate meals and it seems to sort of attenuate the blood glucose response. Like it, it makes it so that the postprandial response is less, like less of a blood glucose spike and also less insulin. In fact, there was one study that's published in the journal Nutrients that looked at just this. It said, all right, we're going to give subjects a half of a fresh avocado along with their meal. And they found 30 minutes later, their glucose levels were not as spiked, less insulin spike as well. And then also so three hours later, less of an insulin spike. This is a huge thing. Now, most of the time, we chalk this up to fiber. We chalk it up to fats. There is something super fascinating going on, and I'm gonna explain it in just a minute. It's a compound called avocatin B. It's a specific fat molecule, and that's what we're really starting to discover could be the really powerful factor long-term with avocado consumption. All right, so first off, yes, the fiber content. Okay, that is going to slow down the absorption of the actual sugars that are in not just the avocado, but whatever you're consuming. Good amounts of monounsaturated fat that have very tremendous properties when it comes down to just metabolism in general. Uh, okay, so the fiber and the fat do that both. Okay, the monounsaturated fats and then the fiber. But what is this avocatin B? Well, what it is, is a fat molecule that is seeming to have an effect on how our mitochondria uses fat. So to give a little bit of context, people think that just carbohydrates are going to make you potentially insulin resistant. Like, okay, if I go out and I eat a bunch of Sour Patch Kids or a bunch of candy that doesn't have a lot of fat in it, yeah, if I do that for a lifetime, there's a good chance that I can affect insulin resistance. So I'm not saying that doesn't apply, but people tend to forget that fats and how much fat is circulating in the bloodstream can positively, absolutely affect our insulin resistance. And it goes like this. If you normally have glucose flowing through the bloodstream and it's nice and easy and the body can respond to it because it's the glucose that's floating around and it allows the body to see it, produce insulin, and we absorb it. But now let's say there's a bunch of fat circulating too. Okay, that fat is circulating too and it makes it much harder to grab the glucose, okay? So in a lot of ways, it's making the glucose circulate for a longer period of time and therefore affecting how it gets uh, taken up. So our cells being exposed to fat in the wrong context, not when it's being oxidized, can absolutely affect the receptor. An insulin receptor, glucose, it can just affect that overall. So we wanna make sure we're doing what we can to mitigate this. Okay, the right kinds of fats do that, like from avocados, avocado oil, et cetera, but also the compounds that are in it. So let's take a look at some research. So the study was published in the journal Molecular Nutrition and Food Research, and it was a rodent model, but still very interesting. Okay, so for eight weeks, they induced obesity with these rodents by, well, you guessed it, giving them a high fat diet. So they induced obesity, but they also induced insulin resistance. Okay, they practically made them diabetic. And then they gave half of that group, after eight weeks, they gave half that group avocatin B, this direct fat molecule. And they found, what do you know? Insulin sensitivity just rapidly improved. What is going on with this? Well, then we have to start looking at what are called mechanistic actions. When we look at like, okay, well, we know that this worked in an observational setting, but what's going on as far as a mechanism is concerned? So again, we, could it be the fiber or no? Well, in this case, we have direct avocatin B, which by the way, today's video sponsor is Thrive Market. If you're looking for avocado oil or even avocado snacks or things like that, but even if you're just looking for uh, keto style foods that are low carb, definitely recommend them. They're an online membership-based grocery store. So I know it's kind of a quick pattern interrupt from what I was talking about, but I just wanted to mention them because they are a sponsor and they're making this content possible. So if you check them out, you can sort by diet type. You can sort by, let's say, uh, uh, keto, paleo, you can sort by vegan, and then you can categorize like no sugar, you can categorize by different things and filter, and then shop exactly what you're looking for. And I know they've got some avocado snacks and really good quality avocado oil, so very relevant with the stuff we're talking about today. And then you just click a few buttons, it's at your doorstep in a couple of days, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, and that is it. Okay, so make sure you check them out, and that link will get you 25% off your first order, Plus, it's going to get you a free gift. But you gotta use the link down below because that is a special sponsorship link because Thrive is awesome. So what's the mechanism? This is where it gets really fascinating. This avocatin B seems to affect our mitochondria and our mitochondria processes energy. But what it does is it is making it so that there is less incomplete fatty acids in the mitochondria when they go through that process. So 
fatty acids circulate through the bloodstream. This is just fat, essentially lipids. They go into the mitochondria and they go through what's called beta oxidation. They get burned, okay? They get burned and they get taken up and converted into energy. In the ideal world, in the perfect setting, every single little fat molecule that's floating around is going to get oxidized, used, and we're sitting pretty. But that's not always the case. There's an inefficiency at play in everything in our body. And a lot of times there's such an inefficiency that those fat molecules are incompletely oxidized, meaning you're left with fragments or some fatty acids that never got oxidized because the mitochondria just didn't have the bandwidth or the efficiency to deal with it. Well, this is not always good because A, then there's less fat that you're actually utilizing and burning, but B, then you have more fat that still gets to circulate around with no purpose contributing to insulin resistance. So when you have this avocatin B that is working against incomplete beta oxidation or fatty acid utilization, you are ensuring more complete oxidation, which is ensuring two things. Ensuring that you're oxidizing the fat and burning fat, which is always good, and ensuring that you don't have a bunch of incomplete fatty acids floating around, okay? This can improve our insulin sensitivity. This improves our glucose tolerance because now there's less stuff floating around and the body can become more sensitive because it can respond to directly what is at play. And in this particular discussion, we're talking about glucose, right? We don't think about the interplay between fat and glucose very much, but if the body can use fats better, it leaves more, let's just call it availability, to handle glucose better. And also, it gets rid of the whole desensitization issue that we would normally have at play. So avocados are really coming in for the win. We've got the oleonethanolamine, the OEA conversion from the oleic acid, the monounsaturated fats. We've got the fiber. We've got the fact that they're a very low carbohydrate, low glucose, moderately higher fructose fruit. And then of course, we've got good old avocatin B. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.